So crossfades are a fantastic tool for us to kind of more seamlessly transition from clip to clip. And, you know, really, I think one of the bigger things about crossfades that become important is that the crossfade allows us to blend. And if we use it wisely, we're able to actually maneuver some specific locations that really work, even though at times they maybe don't. Uh, so a, as a classic example here, a lot of times when we're trying to match places to sound the most natural, we're actually trying to choose positions where uh, the one clip is meeting the other clip uh, so they're not, so they don't look like this, uh, meaning like the, where they're, the, the waveform is returning and the transition smoothly goes back in the correct direction. But if you pull this one down, you can see that there's really not one of those points, meaning like it always, the green is always on its way up when the blue is on its way up as well. And so it's like every time you see these transitions, there's maybe kind of one here, right here at this point. And so sometimes those are better spots to transition, but a lot of times there's a note there so it's not as easy as saying, oh, well, this is where it's going to sound best. Actually, like if that note, if we don't want that note, we got to peel it back and go, oh, that should be here. And then look where it leaves us. It's like, uh, we just have this weird, awkward, you know, thing going on. And that's where the crossfade really does its job. We could do them nice and tight, highlight between two regions and just say, all right, that's what we're doing. You can see the preview here and you, of course you can preview it here. Um, and then hit OK, and then we get it there, but you can see that jumbling of the two kind of taking place right there. You can see this little bit of an overlapping kind of awkwardness. And so um, another thing that we get to do with this is if we break our trimmer tool back out, we can really start to peel this back to fit that note, the note transition that's taking place. And sometimes that fade has to lean more one way or another to feel more natural if we listen to it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to enter dynamic mode again and kind of set this up so we can slide it around. But notice you're really not hearing the transition. There's not a real difference between those two notes and transition there. Lastly, one thing that's often kind of overlooked in this process is we can actually crossfade between tracks. And typically, like if you're looking at this and you're seeing, okay, well, one track is going down while the other track is going in, it's ideally the same process uh, if we were to extend the green all the way to here and extend the blue all the way to here as it would be if we put these on two separate tracks. And so uh, we can actually cross fade between the tracks. What I'm actually going to do real quickly is just duplicate this track. I'm just going to click into it, duplicate it, uh, and actually only open the active playlist real quick, and then show you what I mean. And so if I go over here and I say, all right, let's get rid of the fade, and I want my green to go all the way where this fade is right here. And then I go come over here and I and I, I can just drop off a marker for the moment um, just to show me where this other location was for the blue. I'm going to do the same and get rid of this for the blue. Let's eliminate the green altogether and the blue altogether up here and just pretend that this is how that track was set up. If we hover over both of these and then we hit Command F and we have to make sure that we cross over into the to the no clip region on this one. All of a sudden, we're going to see the same dialog box that we saw before, and it's the same crossfade, essentially. Um, and the reason we might actually want to do this, as I, let me play it for you real quick so you, you understand the similarity. The reason we might want to do this tends to be uh, founded in what's going on on that specific track. So, like, a lot of times I find that... Um, you know, depending on what is taking place in that track location as we're transitioning back and forth, 
uh, is the reason why we might not stack those tracks on the same track ex itself. There may be multiple things going on that really make this kind of a fluid process. One example that I see that I use all the time is when I'm doing two different drum sounds and so I'm I'm actually using either two separate versions of the drums, like two actually different versions of the drums, or I'm actually using the same version of the drums, but I'm gonna process one different than the other. Then what I'll end up doing is as I transition from one variation to the other, I'm gonna use this crossfade. And then as I transition back, I'm gonna crossfade back. So so kind of as an example, you know, it's like if I if I put a bunch of plugins on this particular track and I wanted it to have this sound, instead of running it as automation, you know, I go into the mix window and I say, oh, you know what I here's what I'd like to see is as we get to this track, let's just go ahead and filter the snot out of it. Uh, I'm gonna get rid of these. And you know, maybe I want it to sound like this at this point in time. And let's go audition just the blue. Okay. But I want it to transition to that. That is when it's a good case for that transition. And let's listen to it real quick. And there's some crossfade action. 